A real man has standards for himself, has core values for himself, stands for something bigger than himself, not just for himself, but so he can be a better example to his kids, siblings, community, spouse, whoever. So when you start thinking of life like that, you're just you're just a small little little speck motivating all these other people around you. That's when you you start really living, I think. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the From Boys to Men show brought to you by the Squire program. Uh, today, I want to talk about standing for something, man. I want to talk about uh, doing something for yourself, but it's actually something bigger than yourself. And let me kind of tell you where I got the idea from. I was thinking about um, my teenage years and how I was a lot different than my group of friends in this way. Uh, I grew up skateboarding. Uh, I don't do it as much nowadays, but I grew up skateboarding, sponsored, traveling, doing the whole thing. And it was a lot of fun. I loved it. I had a lot of awesome friends that'll be friends uh, for life, like literally lifelong brothers. And I'm so grateful that, that you know, kind of skating brought me to so many cool people. Uh, but I was thinking about the dynamic of me growing up in a Christian household and not wanting to drink or smoke or do any of those things. Um, even cursing, like I, I was a little bit lighter than a lot of the other guys and having to withstand that peer pressure of not being that way. Cause it was so, it's crazy, man. Like being 13, 14, kids are already smoking cigarettes at the skate park. They're smoking weed, they're drinking. Like some, some dudes are doing even harder stuff than that. And it's, it's crazy, man. You think about it now, now I'm 27. I look back, I'm like, dude, we were kids, bro. These kids were doing some crazy stuff, man. Like back then it was like just seen as normal. You're around it all the time you kind of get desensitized. Um, but it was so important to me that I stood for something and, and did, I, I didn't want to be that person. Um, and in the beginning, it was just because I myself didn't want to do it. Right. And then after that, it became, well, I never know who's watching me and who, you know, who might be looking up to me. And so why would I want to be the person that's just doing the same thing as everybody else? And so now it became like a sense of pride of, really wanted to carry myself a certain way or not do certain things a certain way because um, of of the younger kids, like maybe the nine, 10, eight, you know, or sorry, eight, nine, 10 year olds um, to show them you don't have to be that same guy. You don't have to smoke cigarettes. You don't have to smoke weed. You don't have to drink. Like you can just come and just skate. That's it. Keep it simple. Right. And so um, that was really important to me. So anyways, like I said, you never know who's watching you guys. I had one, one uh, little kid, his name was David, I think. And I remember he came up to me when I was at active working at the store that I used to work. It was a skate shop um, back in the day. And he had told me that he looked up to me the most on the team because of like he I was into the same things that he was or not into the same things that some of the other guys were doing as far as like the partying and things like that and how I carried myself and being polite, you know, and stuff like that. And that's when it kind of switched for me when I was like, okay, this is, this is, uh, it's not always about you. Like, I think sometimes you guys are thinking, well, you know, obviously it's important for you to want to fall in love with it first and you to be passionate about the thing first. But then afterwards, it's, it's going to affect so many more people than yourself, man. Like you got to think, uh, of, of the other people around you, man, like your younger siblings, your nieces and nephews, um, uh, your, your, even your parents, man, your, your pe people that are older than you, like you can still lead up as well. You don't have to just think about the people that are younger than you. It just happens that oftentimes the people are younger than you looking up to you. But anyways, uh, super important. So, uh, uh a story that I want to share with you guys that stuck out with me. And, and I always appreciate when he shares it is, is, uh, from Steve, Steve Ecker, one of the other instructors here at the Squire program. And he shares a story with the dads about uh, flying a flying or freak flag. And when I first heard the name, I was like, I wonder where he's going with this. And so he basically was saying that one day, uh, him and his family were going to go out to dinner. His daughter, uh, he told the kids to put their clothes on, obviously put their shoes, were about to leave. So his daughter comes downstairs and the daughter has one of her tennis shoes on. And then her other foot has her wife, uh, his wife's um, heels on. And so she's wearing lopsided shoes. Like one has a flat, flat shoe, one has a heel, obviously doesn't fit her cause they're not her size. And so she looks crazy and she's okay. I'm ready to go. Let's go. And he's like, you're not, there's no way you're going out of the house like that. There's no way. And she kind of gets upset. Like, well, I want to go out like this. Like, why can't I go out like this? He goes, uh, well, you can't do that. He's like, cause people are going to think you're crazy. Like you can't go out with one heel on and one, you know, uh, tennis shoe on. Like it just, it's what is, what are people going to think? And so she goes, well, I don't care what people think. I want to wear this. And so I'm going to wear this. Like, what's wrong with that? 
And he said in that moment, he realized, like, man, like, you're right. Like, look at me, like, sitting here so worried about what people are thinking. If she wants to wear one heel and she wants to wear uh, one, uh, like, Nike shoe or whatever, let her do it. That's what makes her happy. Let her do it. And so from that moment on, him and his family uh, started flying their freak flag and just wearing whatever they want. They always wear two different color shoes. And that that specific uh, story, that's kind of what started that. And I thought that was that was super cool because a lot of people would never no, the number one, they wouldn't even let their kids go out of the house like that, but let alone adopt that ideology themselves and then make it a family thing where they all do it together. I thought that was awesome, man. So I think more people need to do that um, and stand for something. That's a that's a core value to Steve, like flying your freak flag, being yourself, um, you know, standing for something bigger than yourself. It's not just something that his daughter was 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 uh, partaking in, but also now that him and his the rest of his family do. And I'm sure when he tells that story at the project, maybe some other guys kind of take that back home with them as well. And so it's standing for something a lot bigger than just what happened in his house that day. Um, if you stand for being honest, uh, then you need to be honest. Like you yourself as a person need to be honest. I just had a conversation with my dad. It was really awkward. Um, but I'll tell you the, the context of the story is, uh, uh, some of you guys know that I have a son on the way. My son's coming late in November and super excited about that. And so we're thinking about names. My wife and I were thinking about different names and I'm super big on the meaning of the name, right? Like I, I the name obviously has to sound cool and look cool, or whatever, but I need it to mean something. And I remember uh, my dad, you know, kind of trying to plant the seeds. He, he called me one day. He says, okay, so I know you're thinking of names right now. I don't know if you have anything picked out, but can you just do me a favor and just consider, like, just consider putting my name somewhere in there. And immediately when I, well, I'm in my head anyways, I was like, man, there's no way I'm putting, putting your name in there. Like, no, like I, I, don't, I didn't want to. Right. Uh, and, uh, and, and I really didn't even really know why, but it didn't matter. I was just like, ah, I just kind of dismissed it. I said, okay, dad, cool. No problem. I'll, I'll consider it. Right. Uh, my dad's name is Nadir, by the way. And so, uh, I just couldn't picture putting that name somewhere in there. And then if I was going to put any name, I was thinking of putting mine. So anyways, I thought about it, thought about it, thought about it. And then uh, talked to my wife about it. I said, well, what would you think if we did that? And she was like, well, I'd rather have your name, but, you know, I like that name too and the meaning and all that. So, you know, why not? And so I waited before I told my dad because I didn't want to, I wanted to be very sure. I didn't want to just, you know, tell him off of that one conversation my wife and I had. Say, yep, cool. Uh, you know, our son's name is going to, his middle name is going to be your name. You got your wishes, whatever, right? So I waited a little bit longer. And, um, so then I told him after maybe about a week or so of thinking about it a little bit more and he was excited, of course, super excited. He says, yeah, I know his name is going to, his first name is going to be Apollo, but you know what? I'm going to be calling him, right? Going to be like, come here, little Nadir. And he's all excited. Right. So it meant a lot to him. And, uh, it was, you know, a cool, a cool moment, right. Of, of telling him that that was going to be his name. Uh, now fast forward, maybe about two weeks after that. Uh, and I'm starting to get feelings of like, I don't know, man, I don't know if I want that to be the name. But I'm like, man, that's so foul, though, bro. I only, I already gave him my word. I told him I was gonna name, you know, uh, have his middle name be his name, and and you know that was it. Like, so I kind of dismissed it. I said that's messed up. I'm just kind of, I'm having second thoughts, like I would have with any other name. So who cares? Just ignore it. It'll be fine. Like you said, you like the name, you like the meaning, blah blah blah. Who cares? And I ignored it. Then another week went by, kept coming up. I was like, ah, dude, I don't know, I don't know. But again, dismiss it because I definitely don't want to go back on it on you know, going through with the name because he was so excited. It meant so much to him. And so I didn't want to go back on that. So I ignored it again. Now another week goes by and I actually had a dream about it. It was this whole ceremony. My son was born and we announced the name and, and all this stuff, but it was in the dream. It was my name. And it was a completely different feeling that I had felt before. I was like, I woke up and I was like, nah, man, I, it's as much as it's going to hurt him. I got to let him know like, this is, you know, I just feel like it should be my name, right? So it's a very difficult decision. So I called him and I go, uh, I go, hey, dad, I got to talk to you real quick. Um, so I know you're going to be upset with me. I know you're going to be mad. Um, you're probably going to be really hurt. Uh, and, I, and I hate to be the type of man that doesn't keep my word. And I'm like prepping him, right? And he goes, it's about the name, huh? I'm like, damn. It's like, yeah, man, I feel really bad. Um, I told him about the thought process. I waited like almost a month to where I even, even, you know, really decided concrete that I was going to go with my name instead of his name. And so, um, I let him know. I said, Hey man, I've, I've always been honest with you. You know, that's something that's a really big core value of mine and I'm not going to change it now. 
Um, you can tell how important this is because I don't I don't want to have this conversation with you. But still, even with that said, this is a really big decision. It's a lifelong decision. And so um, this is why I'm having this conversation with you. So he goes, all right, I respect that. It was a little awkward. Not going to lie to you. It was, it, was, <laughs> it was silence on the phone for a little bit. But I just sat in the silence. I was like, hey, listen, I understand you're going to be upset. But nonetheless, I still had to be a man and talk to my dad about it and be open and upfront about it. Um, and I also had to be a man and not just talk to him about it and communicate, but also be honest with myself. How many guys out there are, you know, uh, going along with things that they don't really agree with or that they don't want to be involved with, but they're going around along with it because they don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to hurt someone's feelings. Uh, and they don't want to, you know, cause any kind of drama or issues. Like, bro, you got to stand on it, man. Like if you feel something in your heart, like something really means something to you, then you have to go with that. Like, it's just, it, it's just, it's going to be like this internal thing. You're going to feel it. It's going to be an issue, man. I'm telling you. So you gotta, you gotta be willing to, uh, get a little awkward. Sometimes you gotta be a little awkward. You gotta be willing to talk to people and express your thoughts and opinions and your feelings. And so, um, this is a really big thing, a really big, a really big, uh, thing that I think a lot of people need to to realize and, and take care of. So a real man uh, has standards for himself, um, has core values for himself, stands for something bigger than himself, uh, not just for himself, but so he can be a better example to his, his uh, kids, siblings, community, spouse, whoever, older, younger, wiser, <laughs> less wise. It doesn't matter, man. You're, you're representing um, a, a whole generation of men. And so when you start thinking of life like that, you're just, you're just a small little, little speck motivating all these other people around you. That's when you, you start really living, I think. And so anyways, um, that's how I live my life. And I hope that you guys uh, got some value from that as well. So anyways, guys, we appreciate you tuning in another week of the Squire show. Stay tuned for, uh, next guest. It's going to be awesome. One of my favorites. In fact, I think I say that about everybody is the guests uh, that come on the show just keep getting better and better and better. They're awesome interviews. And so if you got any value from it, um, support us by just liking the video or sharing it with somebody that you thought about when you watched it. We appreciate you. We'll see you next time. <laughs>